the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I cast my ground before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. dimensions never seen take us to dimensions never known job said there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there take us to those virgin dimensions in the spirit oh god we vow that jesus will be glorified amen and amen god bless you and good afternoon Pastor Elijah, thank you. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. And um, I'm honored to also celebrate Pastor Sarah. God bless you, ma. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless it. God bless you. Um, I believe that it is important for believers to not only know God, but to be taught the principles and the protocol of his presence. Encounters are predictable. Men can be mentored into understanding the ways of the spirit. And I believe that meetings like this they are not only retreats, but they are times provided for by the Spirit of God to allow us encounter the life, the power, the glory of God. I'm going to be sharing briefly and then we'll pray. I believe that so many people are seeking for the factors that make for the relevance of a man, of a person within the context of a generation. Please listen carefully. Here and there, preachers, thank you for the volume, thank you for the sound. Here and there, continue to seek for the various ways to access the power of God, 
to access relevance within the context of a generation. And here and there we have invented all kinds of formulas and methodologies attempting to touch the heart of God, attempting to touch the grace of God to the end that we may sustain the ability to be relevant within the context of a generation. But you see, one of the things that we need to understand is that in the dealings of God with men, creativity is not required. You are not at liberty to invent the pathway that makes for your relationship with God. It is only when it has to do with your dominion upon and around the cosmos, then you will draw from the wealth of creativity when it has to do with God, there is always a pattern. Please understand. The first mistake that I think many people make is they attempt, as it is possible, it says, stand ye in the ways and see, and then ask for the old path, wherein is a good way. That means not every way is a good way. It says, when you find it, walk therein. And that if you walk in this path, the proof is that you will enter a Sabbath. There is a rest when you learn to walk in his ways. Hallelujah. It was prophet Micah that began to speak about the end time church. And he said that it will come to pass in the last days. Micah was teaching us that the mountain of the Lord's house, are we together now, shall be exalted above other mountains and other hills. And men will flow through it. They will flow to it. And this will be their conviction. They will say to one another, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Are we together now? To the mountain of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. This is why we seek his audience. To know, to come into a comprehension of the ways of God. Are we still together? So it is important for us to understand that there is a pattern. In the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible records that God continued to come to supervise what they were doing. Remember, they were building a tabernacle in the similitude of that which was in heaven. And the goal was to be able to host his presence. Are we together now? And the spirit of God had to come upon a man called Bezalel. It was not just a, he was not a businessman. It was God's insistence to see that his patterns be kept. And so he had to be empowered by the Spirit of God. And God supervised the dimensions of the building. Everything had to be done according to pattern. His presence never came until the last peg was hit. And then the Bible says, then his Shekinah. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this room. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills my life. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. His glory, the glory of God always comes to prove that his patterns have been kept. Everywhere you see the manifestation of the glory of God is an attestation that his patterns have been kept. If the patterns of God are not kept, the glory, the Shekinah of God, there are three dimensions of the presence of God. The first dimension of his presence is called his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. It was the psalmist that said, where can I hide from your presence? If I go to Hades, the place of the dead, you are there. So there is the omnipresence of God. The second dimension of his presence is what I will call his Emmanuel dimension. God with us. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. 
The third dimension of his presence is what we call his Shekinah. His presence. He does not just come. He comes and ensures that the people are aware he is there. Are we together now? That one, you don't just get it by default. It is a reward for insisting that his patterns be kept. So I can know to what degree you are in keeping with his patterns by seeing the dimension and the effulgence of glory that is upon your ministry, upon your life. This has nothing to do with sentiment and it has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with the insistence. The glory of God has a size that will not change. Until your alignment creates that shape, the glory cannot rest on you. Your assignment is through the sacrifice of death and alignment that you assume a mold and a posture that will make God feel at home whether he's in you or on his throne. There is no difference. It says, now arise, O God, and come, not to the temple, to your resting place. It's a place intended for you to remain. Are we together? So we have different opinions about different dimensions of the kingdom that we seek. I want to see the power and the glory of God come and rest upon my life. What is the formula? Some say pray. Others say fast. Others say have vigils. Others say go for an impartation. Others say take communion. Others say get a bottle of oil and all of these fabrications that come and, and sometimes you see let me tell you it is dangerous to have failure for a long time because it will lead you to create a theology around your limitation and you will mentor others from the standpoint of your frustration to mean that just because my Christian experience could not capture this dimension it is impossible for God to flow on that wise. It is why conferences like this are so designed to expand our spiritual horizon. To bring us to a point where we access possibilities that are beyond our current experiences. And we must be humble. That's why the Bible says we receive with meekness. We receive with meekness, not with intelligence, with meekness. The fortitude to understand that there is more. There is more. There is more. More than my experience. There is more. John was already in heaven and yet he was told to come up hither. In heaven, come up hither and I will show you. You have seen the things that be but you have not seen the things that will happen. From that pedestal you cannot see it. So come up hither. Are we together? There is a pattern that is responsible for the effulgence of the power of God upon a man. There is a pattern that is responsible for church growth. There is a pattern that is responsible for wealth and prosperity. There is a pattern that is responsible for becoming the face of God to a generation. There is a pattern. And we must become like spiritual archaeologists with our hearts open to seek and search for the patterns. Jeremiah told us that these patterns are there. Some of them are dusty. They have been ignored by the pride of our civilization. Some of them have been ignored by the, the puffing up of the vain knowledge that comes with our dispensation. But let God be true. And every man and every age be a liar. The patterns of God are unbending. They will never change. Are we blessed? It was the psalmist that said, oh God, you are my God. He says, early will I seek you. That means in the dealings of God with men, timing is important. All times do not produce the same result. No, sir. The boy Samuel began to seek God early. By the time he would become an adult, none of his word would fall to the ground. It matters the timing of your spiritual pursuit because it takes time to know God. The jealousy of God does not allow him to be revealed carelessly. He will fetch your hunger and until it supersedes everything within time, he will not come. Away with that mentality that we have. Just because God loves us does not mean his presence is cheap. Anything of, valuable carry, of value carries a price.
Are we still together? Yes, Jesus. There are patterns. The restoration to the patterns of God will be the secret to the power and the grace of the church. Otherwise, we will continue to write books. We will propose dimensions that we know are possible in God as revealed from Bible history, but our experiences will fail to capture them. And a time will come when a generation will be tired of our stories. These things I write unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, not teach alone. We must document persuasions that are provable. God can do this. Yes, we know. God can lift. Yes, we know. We turn them into songs. We turn them into poems. We turn them into sermons. And they are coming from well-meaning hearts. But we must come into a point of accuracy, quintessence, and understanding. The patterns of God are a proof of his justice. It brings predictability to our work. Are we blessed? Luke chapter 1, please. You won't believe I've not even started teaching. But Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I don't know how we got there, but wherever we can stop. Luke chapter 1. We'll start from verse 1. Please look at this. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were what? Eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Verse 3. It seemed good to me also. Dr. Luke now is writing to Theophilus. Part of his mentorship platform. He's, he's, he's telling us the object, the goal, the motivation behind his writing the synoptic, the book of Luke. He said, it seemed good to me also. Having had what? perfect understanding of all things. A man can come to that realm. Perfect understanding of all things. From the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Please keep that scripture. Keep it verse 4. That you may know the certainty so that you will come to a point of comprehension that you have not been taught and are not been taught cunningly devised fables as spiritual and as high as these truths are there are realities in the spirit that can find expressions in this earth realm and so Luke is writing to Theophilus that as complicated as these things sound, do not think they are just fables. These things are true. And I'm being meticulous in my description to the end that you may know the certainty of those things. So that when we say God lifts, you don't doubt. When we say God can anoint, you don't doubt. When we say God can pick a man from a dunk hill, you don't just think you are echoing a prophet's writings. That these things are certain. The apostle says it this way, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. It's not only that I have believed, I've been persuaded. It's an indoctrination. It has become part of my conviction. It will not change. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So I'd like us to look very briefly and then we'll pray. The patterns of God that have been allocated by grace and by the spirit that can allow a man and allow men to do business with God within the context of a civilization. Please listen to me. Let me tell you this sincerely. It takes more than being available to be used by God. You come as you are, but you are never used as you are. Are we together now? Yes. And so, aside from the election of grace, there is an election that comes as proof of the depth of your alignment. There were people who were called prophetically, but there were others who insisted. They were so aligned, God could not resist them. An example of such was Elisha. There was no prophecy that Elisha was meant to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer, but Elisha refused. 
Are we together? Insisted until he became a prophet. So there is a calling according to God's predeterminate counsel. But there is the calling that, that makes as a result of your refusal. That Lord, if you are passing this way, I will align so much you cannot ignore me. And God says, look, I must create space for you in my program. Because it is not normal for men to be this yielded. And since you have gone this far to bend over backwards, I must find a space for you. He says, let his bishopric, let another take. There are vacant spaces in the dealings of God. There are people who have been mandated to carry certain certain mantles and certain graces but because one of the things that God gave men fundamentally not Christians men is the power to choose I can reject the call of God it says as many as received him anything received can be rejected are we are we still together so in the economy of God the relay as as designed for a generation you pass this button here. You have a worshiper here. You have an apostle here, a pastor, an evangelist. It's a formation. But an individual can refuse and say, as an act of my will, I choose to sabotage your program. And his mercy will continue. And while the mercy of God continues to last, his eyes will keep searching for vessels who were not in that program but have refused and said, God, you cannot ignore me. You can't ignore my morning sacrifices. You cannot ignore my worship. You cannot ignore my tears. You cannot. I know that I come from a family that should not be part of your program. But let my alignment be an altar that calls you to be part of your program. You can call the attention of God through sacrifice. Not just a seed. You. Are we together? What does it take to be used by God? Does it take your worship? Does it take your preaching? Does it take your education? What does it take to really be used by God? Does it take just saying, Lord, I surrender? What, what, what is the key? Please pay attention to what I teach you. Because for many, these, this conference will become a defining moment to your spiritual work. Truly, it will. Number one. I have searched, and, and let me say this, and I submit to you while I say this, I do not mean in any way to communicate anything that shows pride. And if at any point you perceive anything called pride, I'm, I'm sorry in advance. But I'm just, I'm just saying it. Sometimes it's difficult to articulate spiritual things without being misunderstood. You know, sometimes um, it's, it's difficult because people think that um, it's pride. Paul said it in Ephesians chapter 3. Before he began his exegesis, he said, look, 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 I need to put some things clear. When we start from verse 3, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 3, I think I should borrow the words of the apostle. It says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Everybody say the mystery. It's an exact mystery. A mystery is a body of knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints. An exact body of knowledge. Not any body of knowledge. Are we together now? Yes, please keep the scripture there. But it was Apostle Peter that began to teach us that we are a chosen generation. Don't just keep the scripture. I'm just digressing for a reason. He called us a royal priesthood. Is that true? He says we are a holy nation, a peculiar people. And he tells us why all these things are possible. He says we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Everybody say marvelous light. It is the presence of the marvelous light that becomes our advantage in the kingdom. Marvelous light. An exact body of spiritual truth that brings forth superior victory in the kingdom. There were many lights, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1. It says, but God made two great lights. So the lights are not the same. Even among the stars, the Bible says, one differed from another in glory. 
So the dimension of glory that is released in and through your life is not just dependent on the love of God, but the depth and the quality of spiritual illumination that you sustain. Are we together? Yes. So Paul is speaking here that by revelation it was known to him. There are things that cannot be studied. There are things that cannot be researched. You are initiated into that body of knowledge. It's like occult. I'm sorry to use that word, but it is true. There are certain dimensions of spiritual understanding that you will never find, no matter how zealous you are. It's a gift given to your passion. Your assignment is to be passionate enough to attract the dimension of the spirit of revelation and you are introduced into that body of knowledge. Verse 4. Still Ephesians 3. Whereby when ye read, and in this case when ye listen, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's touch one scripture and then verse 9 of it. I love this because part of the revelation given to men Part of the mystery and the graces that people sustain when they have encounters with this revelation is certain graces that speak in the earth realm. One of it is the grace that can make men see. There is a grace that makes men see. Not just hear, see. A grace that works upon your fortitude of perception. Regardless your educational background, regardless your level of exposure, that when a man is ministering under that kind of grace, you are brought into a point where you must understand what is being communicated. This is not oratory. That's what the Bible calls portraits. It's not the fluency of speech. It's a spiritual quality that coordinates spiritual understanding in a way and manner that it must be understood regardless of your lapse in understanding. You are under the influence of a grace that insists that you must understand. Hallelujah. I've shared about my encounters with Jesus. I've shared about my encounters with several generals and carriers of the fire of revival. Some of them you've read about them. Many of them have long gone to be with the Lord. And I do not claim to know all things. That would be pride and that would be a lie. But there is one thing I can tell you. I understand the protocol of the secret place. It's an office. And I want to share with you a few things that I believe will be able to help believers to find God and prove to a generation you found him. Are we together? So while you're seated, can you hold hands with someone and just begin to pray in the spirit just in a few minutes? Is someone praying? All the overflows, make sure you are praying. Open my eyes, oh God. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what you will say unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, the first key that qualifies a man to be mightily used by God, to become a conduit of his possibilities within the context of a generation, the first key is not prayer. The first key is not fasting. The first key is not giving. The first key is death. 
The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not all of your seed. It's not all of your certificate. It's not all of your singing. Death. It was Jesus that was speaking and said, The hour has come that the Son may be glorified. And then he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except, this is the condition, A corn of wheat falls to the ground. If it falls to the ground and remains there, it's still not dead. Just because you are touching the ground does not mean you have died. And dies. He says it abides alone. Death. Death. Complete surrender that leads to death. Complete surrender. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's a mystery. I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I am sponsored by another agency. Please look at me. This is a very powerful revelation. Being used by God is more than just being, is more than surrender. Surrender is important, but it does not stop at surrender. You must die. It's a condition that not even Jesus escaped. The price for life is death. The price for the throne is the cross. It's non-negotiable. There are no sentiments attached to it. Now, this is the kind of that sometimes our generation does not like to listen. And sometimes it, it is because, you know, in an attempt to bring balance to our theological understanding and our exegesis of scripture sometimes we move in the flesh and we begin to just push everything left right and center listen when people talk look at their results first it is important for you to know this the price the first key is death when Solomon was about to dedicate the temple Listen, the Bible says that there was a sacrifice already upon the altar. Are we together? And then Solomon began to make a covenant. And he said, oh God, arise, come to your resting place. That if anyone turned to the temple in need for help, let the covenant speak. And then the Bible says, the fire came, the Shekinah of God came upon that temple. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech thee brethren, this is Paul mentoring the church in Rome, part of his apostolic ministry. I beseech thee brethren, he says, by the mercies of God that ye offer not your spirit, not your mind, your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Not just your act of worship. That means your act of worship that can touch God. Your body. There are certain things about death that we must understand. Number one, a dead man does not respond. A dead man has no ego to protect. For as long as you are alive in yourself, something about your flesh will interrupt the program of God. It has nothing to do with being good or being bad. It has everything to do with being human. That the reality of our humanity has a way of interrupting God's program. No man can endure pain indefinitely. No man can endure embarrassment indefinitely. No man can endure discomfort indefinitely. So the moment you are alive, one day you will react. And you may react just when the program of God is about entering a new season. So God will not take chances. You will die as the journey starts. Death. The grave is a mysterious place. We fear it. But there is a dimension of the grave that we need. Because it is where death ends and where resurrection starts. They all happen in the grave. There are many times that God allows, let me tell you one of God's technology for bringing death to you. 
He will allow what you fear to come upon you. Now, I know you don't like what I'm saying. It does not destroy you. Isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. And then verse 2 says, When thou passest through waters, I will be with you. Not I will take you out of it. I will be with you. There are times that he takes you out of it, but there are times that he walks with you. Both of them are called deliverance. You need to learn. <laughs> Please keep that scripture. 43 and verse 2. It says, when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through fire. It's amazing that when it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk slowly. Because there is something the fire needs to do in your life. When you walk through fire, you don't run through it. You walk through fire. And as it burns your ego, as, as the prophecies of your enemies seem to come to pass, and it's as if God is not watching. God, I thought you would come through for me to shame them. And God says there is a bigger agenda than proving a point. Stay on course. We are talking about something generational, not some mundane family crisis. We are talking about carrying mantles, not for a church, not for a city, for a generation. Is running away from Saul because Saul is looking for him, not knowing that this young boy, this runaway boy, would later not only become the king of Israel but answer the name that would birth the Christ. But he's in a cave called Adullam. What is a king doing in a cave? Let me tell you this hear me, just help those under the anointing. Listen to me. I wish I can tell you everything will happen overnight. Not everything in this kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. If everything is a gift, what is the reward for obedience? Not everything is a gift. No, there are rewards in this kingdom. It is why all men are not the same. Please hear me. I don't know how to make you believe this. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But by reason of God's predeterminate counsel, alongside our various depths of sacrifices, we have been separated into spiritual cadres. Not all things are possible for everybody. There are people whose life has become an altar and a covenant. The, the covenant has implications. Elijah loves heaven. There are 7,000 other prophets. Don't you think they were praying, God, don't mind that prophet, open the heavens. And God says, I'm doing business with this man at another level. Your sacrifice can make God brand his dealings with you. Give it a name. Many people walked with God in the Bible, but not all were called the God of this. There were people who walked with God. He named himself after his experience with them. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, right now, I'm not living for myself again. Anybody can think what he thinks about me. It is no longer about the preaching. Listen, the secret to be in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on his presence. When you die enough to love him, Love him more than ego. Love him more than money. This adventure of using God to be successful. This adventure of using God to get anointing. Just because you think it's anointing, God is not that foolish. Until all of you desires all of him, you will not find him. Let me show you the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Please do not forget this for as long as you live. I call it the law of encounter. And ye shall seek me and only find me when ye search for me with all your heart. Everybody say all your heart. That means if you seek God and you don't find him, the diagnosis is that something about you has been lying to you. It's not all of you that is looking for him. 
And you don't have to be bad for this to happen. Remember, we are not talking about good and bad. We are talking about the humanity of men. I know you came from a background where no one succeeded. And so the pressure is on you to make it. I know you are human. But unfortunately, God does not work that way. A woman wants a child to prove to her stepwife, Penina, that she's not barren. And God says, if that is why you want a child, you will not hear from me. In spite of Hannah's mocking, I mean Penina's mocking Hannah, you, you thought God would say, okay, let, let's prove a point. There are times that the agenda is bigger than proving a point. And if the goal, your object of receiving spiritual thing is so they will know, God says, that's too small. You must give me a reason that is generational. Is God blessing us this afternoon? Death. The heart of man, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 and 10. God himself, vetting the heart of man, told us something that we must never forget. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Do you know how many deceitful things we have in this life? And yet the Bible says the heart is more deceitful than death. That means even the owner of the heart can be deceived by the heart is carrying. The heart is so deceitful it can deceive you, the owner of the heart. It says who can know it? This is the reason why we need to die. This is how God operates. Verse 10. I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That means while I kneel down and say, Oh God, visit me, increase my church. And while I'm rolling on the ground, he's not just seeing my rolling, he goes to my. Remember, his word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. He's seeing that in spite of my rolling on the ground, the truth is that I, I saw a ministerial colleague that we started ministry with and I saw the expansion in his church and sincerely, in the name of honesty, my humanity just came up and said, ah, Mr. Man, you've been in this city for many years. What are you doing? And that was the premise of my 40 days fast. And from day one, the fast, it will not be useless, but it will not be used for what you think it will be used for. It will rather be used to align your spirit to see what is wrong, not to give you membership. I hope you still love me. Death. It's amazing how believers are distracted because of little things. It's proof that we are alive in ourselves. He didn't call me apostle. He didn't invite me here. I have noticed this person looks down on me. All these things are proof that you are alive. I'm not saying to dishonor people. No, not at all. But there is a way you can so die that you lose. You are, you, your eyes have been set like a flint. There are some things that do not have power within your environment again. God can give you a billion naira now and say give it. And you are not buying and casting and say, Lord, if you are the one, let the wind blow to the left. All those things are proof of unbelief. It's, it's proof that you are alive in yourself. You see, Ba, this money we are looking for that distracts us. Did you know the last treasurer Jesus had failed him? He's still searching for a replacement till today. So the, the dimension of wealth that people talk about that makes them, people have not even seen the wealth that is coming to the church. And I mean it truly speaking. But the person who will be God's treasurer in this generation must be the person who, whether God keeps his blessings in the storehouse or in your life, it must be the same for him. The reason why you love, listen, please help those under the anointing. The reason why, look at me, the reason why you trust your bank is ease of withdrawal. I hope you know. The reason why you trust your bank is because you can slot an ATM anytime. When you become that ATM to God, you will never be empty. I just failed to say that. Death. 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 Only 
dead vessels carry God. The size of God is too heavy for you to carry while you are alive. It will kill you. Only dead men can carry God. You want to carry the grace and the anointing that brings a generation under the submission of Christ. Please hear me. It is going to take more than posters and billboards. It is going to take more than intelligent speaking. It's going to take more than theological exegesis and your ability to communicate well. There is a track record in the spirit. There is a signature that is only signed with blood. A proof of death. It is at that point you will file your name in the realm of the spirit. Jesus I know. Paul, I know. You write your name. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. Here is my scar. I went through it. I went through it. Demons will not just listen to you just because you saw it in the Bible that they shall cast. You try it. The sons of Sceva tried it, did they? We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Jesus whom Paul preaches, the real Jesus. And yet the spirit did not shout and say, ah, Jesus. Even Jesus was talking to Satan. Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, 40 days fasting. He's talking with Satan and Satan is not shaking. Satan is saying, let me hold you and take you to a mountain. So what is Satan really afraid of? Jesus, the word, the logos of God, filled with the spirit of God without measure, with fasting on top, is talking with Satan. The word is now spoken and yet Satan is not running. Find out what he really is afraid of so that we don't make a fool of ourselves. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. I told God anything I cannot give you in this life may it never come and I'm saying it as I'm standing here if the Lord asked me to stop ministry now I stand by the God of heaven I'm speaking I know that they are recording this I will never carry a mic again till Jesus comes I love him more than ministry I love him more than titles don't allow men clap you out of the will of God you must sustain the grace and the hunger please hear me I'm, I'm, I'm talking, this is not preaching, you know. This is not, I'm, I'm speaking from the, you know, sometimes when we see people who God has dropped his hand upon them, sometimes we need to be open like this to say this thing so you will get it. Don't let fame, fame can be deceptive. People can clap their hands, you know. When I was coming in, thank God for your wonderful protocol people. I saw everybody running around and some of you were holding cameras. I said, ha ah. ha. Oh God, that great man is still your boy. Still your boy. Still your boy. He's somebody's father, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's mentor, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's role model, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's hero, but he's still your boy. The day you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit, and pride gives you an award for completion, that day you begin to die immediately no matter who you are. The day your knees becomes too far from the ground, that is the day your crown will fall from your head. I tell you this. This is the mystery behind the destruction of the great. This is why people start well and don't finish well. It's not sin that destroys people. It's not just fornication that destroys people. It's not just all these demonic things. No, the mercy of God is still there. It's the rebellion of rejecting the secret place. That's where people die. That's where people stay and are destroyed. They clap you out of his presence and you cannot die. Please listen to what I'm telling you. 
Because there are people, this is why you came here today. Leave, forget man of God, woman of God. Thank God for that. But it's time, somewhere in this service, we are going to cry before God. And say, Lord, this is no longer apostle. This is your boy. I know I'm a great musician I know I'm a great man but I come to you may your all seen eye search my heart search my motive live ministry live preaching live singing focus on me listen you can be fasting as a man of God that fasting is, complete, is almost wasted. You can go to God as a colleague, trying to get one or two things. The anointing for the season with your hand in your pocket. Let me tell you the truth. You need to understand that although we are one with Christ, our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. And there are times you need to join the 20 and 4 elders. Take away your golden crown and join them to lie down and cry, Kadosh, holy, holy. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.